Hello, happy Passover. We have now entered into the week of Passover. You're watching this video. Passover has just happened and we've entered into the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So this week, what I want you to do is set aside time. Come before the Lord in purification, consecration. Take communion. On Thursday, April 1st, we recognize the Lord's Supper. That's the night that he would have had the last supper with his disciples. And then he would have gone to the Garden of Gethsemane. And so on Thursday, April 1st, remember this time. Then on Friday, April 2nd, is in accordance with the Christian calendar, our Good Friday. It would be the day that Jesus died on the cross and shed his blood for us. It's the day that sin, death, and the grave were defeated because his pure blood, the pure blood of the Passover lamb, was shed for us. Then Saturday, April 3rd, is his t the time of uh we consider his time of his burial and then of course sunday is resurrection sunday april 4th the time where we remember the great victory that he rose from the grave and so on the hebrew calendar the end of the week which is the first second third and fourth is part of what we call the feast of unleavened bread the feast of unleavened bread goes for seven days and so near the end of the week is in accordance with the christian calendar that's when we say that he died on passover we call that okay almost a week later after when passover starts on the hebrew calendar that's our april 2nd okay friday april 2nd then sunday april 3rd would be considered our unleavened bread day. And then Sunday, April 4th, is our feast of first fruits. And so that kind of ties in the difference between the Hebrew calendar and the Christian calendar. We celebrate things near the end of the Passover week, which started on Saturday, March 27th, all right? So the Christian calendar ties it up just there in the end. This is Passion Week. It's a time where, where we take communion. We take the unleavened bread, the matzah bread. It has piercings in it. It's bruised. It has brown spots on it. It doesn't have any leaven in it. It's without sin. It's pure. So we take a matzah cracker and a little cup of a grape juice. We take the bread and we remember Isaiah 53. By his stripes you have been healed. Then you take the cup and you remember that by his shed blood, you have forgiveness of sins. And this is his last supper that he took with his disciples. It's the Passover. He says, "I'm go and prepare the Passover. Go and prepare the Feast of Unleavened Bread. He is the great Passover lamb. He is the bread of life. And so when you take that, what you're saying is, Lord, I remember you. We're told, even by the Apostle Paul, this is the Lord's Supper. He said, do this in remembrance of me. And so we, as his uh, members of his body, need to be taking his uh, the remembrance through the Passover, through the bread and the cup, remembering the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, remembering Isaiah 53 and who he is and indeed what he's done for us. And so I just want to encourage you, you have the victory. You can see the victory, you have the victory. And because of what Jesus has done, the eternal realms are tied into the earth realms. This means that he has positioned us as now members of of eternity with him. You are seated with Christ in heavenly places. This means any area that's broken in your life, that's a mess, that's incomplete, that's out of alignment, that's a crooked space, he put in to uh, making it straight by his death, burial, and resurrection. He put everything in alignment. He made the crooked paths straight. All you have to do is believe who you are now because of what he did and everything changes. Our mind focused on the Lord is in a place of life and peace. That place is the place that the Lord is calling you to live every day. Now, we can get our minds right and, and in line when we take communion. This is why I'm telling you communion is so important this week. This is the Passover week. This is the time where we remember his shed blood. The angel of death will pass over us because of what he has done. And, and we need to be uh, lifting up in prayer this week, praying and giving. Deuteronomy 16, 16 says three times a year, you'll come before the Lord and bring me an offering. That is the, one of those is the feast of unleavened bread. That's this week. Bless the Lord with an offering. Take communion.
communion, set time aside, fast, position yourself to think about what Jesus has done for you. We are called as his body to remember him during this time. See, when you do that, you're going to go to next levels of understanding who he is, who you are apart from him, who you are in him. Open heaven is going to come upon you. You're going to position yourself to know and understand that you live in the eternal realms Though you're in the earth, you're really in eternity even today. You've crossed into the rest and peace of the promised land. And this is the way that we remember it, through remembering this week. I want you to share this with a friend today because somebody needs to hear the real meaning behind Passover. The real meaning that always God had attended before the foundation of the world to send his son who was in agreement that he would come to the earth and save the souls that were going to be lost, to sin, death, and the grave, lost to the lies of the enemy, lost to what Adam and Eve did when they ate the forbidden fruit. But we are no longer lost. We have been saved, redeemed, and now we have all the blessings of heaven, everything that's a part of that inheritance. We have everything that he's given us. Yes, you are a king's kid. You are a child of the king. You have his inheritance. If you can see it, you can have it. That's why I want you to see the victory. What you see, what you picture in your mind will indeed come to pass when you can see the heavenly realms and the wealth that God has given you. And wealth that doesn't, that yes, that is financial, but it's also nothing missing, nothing broken. Shalom peace has been given to you. That's part of the inheritance of the children of the king. And so I just want to encourage you that when we remember Passover, we're also remembering that we've come into our promise. That's what the Feast of First Fruits is all about. When we enter in on Resurrection Sunday, we are entering into a moment where we have been resurrected with him. Apostle Paul tells us in Romans chapter 6, we died with Christ, we're buried with Christ, and we're resurrected with Christ, okay? So we're in him, resurrected with him. You are now a new creature. All the old has passed away. Egypt is gone. The promised land is here. Now all that needs to happen is the head needs to catch up, and Passover helps us be able to do that. So I just want to encourage you today that if you can get your head on straight, take that communion, stand with the Lord, bless him with an offering, walk through this week of purification and consecration, you're coming out on the other side and it's the other side of promise. It's great and amazing things. It's heavenly blessings being made manifest on the earth. It's the eternal time zones coming into the earthly time zones. God is so good. He's taking care of everything for us and he did it when Jesus agreed to come to save us for the joy set before him he endured the cross and now we are those who are his brothers and sisters the first fruits the first fruits that come as extensions of the first fruit which was him the resurrected Christ so just give the Lord a high five the victory is yours if you can see the victory you can have the victory and it can be full complete and total because of what Jesus Christ has done so let's hashtag I have the victory I have the victory because he bought the victory hallelujah share this with a friend somebody needs to hear what this week is all about I love for to have you join me on a journey through the Hebrew calendar go to charismacourses.com for an entire year my husband and I are gonna walk you through the Hebrew calendar from the month of Nisan that we're in right now through this Passover all the way to add our to 2022 come and join me on the journey they through the Hebrew calendar because you are going to be amazed to see how all of this was planned before you were even born. You were a thought in the mind of the Savior when he planned the Hebrew calendar and he knew that if we met him on his times and seasons, he would give us great blessing. So I want to invite you to join me there or you go to CandaceSmithman.com and you can also click a link there that will take you into joining me for uh, the journey through the Hebrew calendar. You also get the power of God's calendar. It's a free uh, teaching that you can have to really understand the importance of what we're talking about. This is a vital week. You want to know everything about it. There's blessings, seven blessings of this Passover. There's so much to teach you. Cannot do it even in one year. It's something that you have to keep learning and learning. And so I have lots of videos. My husband has lots of videos that give past teachings to help really bring about the fullness. So make sure you go to charismacourses.com. Sign up for that or go to candacesmithman.com. Share this with a friend and remember, hashtag 
you have, I have the victory. All right. Have a blessed week and a happy, happy Resurrection Sunday.